Uh, so that's good stuff. Hard yes. <laughs> yes. I did something right. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's get into the draft. Game number two. <laughs> On the way here at the moment, Soul Torturers leads one to nothing. Yeah, even though they lead one to nothing there, Red Can, it's really close to getting that yep. game. They keep doing this. They're like so close to getting games off of Soul Torturers, so close to the win against L5, uh, you know. Um, but Typhex said when we when we talked with him, you know, for this tournament, the one thing he has is patience because he recognizes that there's two new players on his team and they need stage experience. So after getting this stage experience, you know, if they show up again at BlizzCon, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing Red Cannons again. But you still want at least that one map. That's true. <laughs> yeah. You, you yeah. definitely want to take this one. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see Red Cannons win. I mean, excuse my language. I know we're not supposed to be biased, but gosh darn it, I want them to get a victory because it would be so good for them and the people that are cheering for them and such. And I've just become so attached to the story. Seriously, Tim, that language, is that really necessary? <laughs> I know. <laughs> that was... I, I was going to go the other way. I was like, <laughs> that's your... Ex example of I'm harsh language. Live on air, man. Gosh, that's that's pretty desperate. It. That's going I in. I thought I taught you more than that by now. <laughs> <laughs> no, please. Bitterness. <laughs> anyway. My so, pronunciation is bad. I ask you guys here, I feel like the most success that I've seen from the Lad AM team here is when they have Varian on their team. Is that a must pick up for them, for them to be successful in this tournament? I mean, I think the Varian has brought really good success. I don't know if it's completely necessary. The Varian goes very much in the blow-up line of composition, and, you know, they, they drafted the Anubrak here, which I think kind of does the same. It's a bit harder to execute. You have your skill shots. You have to kind of combine them with your Cocoon as well, but, you know, it's it's uh, both of them have a point-and-click disable. I think the Anubrak is just as good. I think having the Varian is something that is great when they are up against a Genji, when they are up against something they really want to lock down mm -hmm. as a counter. And I think for them it's really play to your comfort zone. Oftentimes when we're talking about regions and uh, we're talking about the major regions, I'm a huge fan of copying other regions' drafts, trying to experiment yep. with that and incorporate parts of it into your own. But if you come from uh, one of the non-league regions and you have trouble with finding scrim partners, then just play what you're most comfortable with and uh, take from that. So I wouldn't really mind if they would play around a little bit more lockdown now that they know they are going up against the lid. And it's once again the focus on a single melee assassin that we see from the Soul Torturers. Only problem that I have this time with something like a Varian is you have that Divine Shield as an option, you can get the cleansers, even just simply going into uh, the extra armor, Illidan is going to be a beast one way or another in this, in this setup. For, for me, it's the reason why I say Varian is because of the cooldowns and how low they are compared to most heroics. And I feel mm -hmm. like this team, whenever they go in for an engage, they don't stop trying to engage until they either lose the fight desperately or they win it. And Varian at least gives you that ability to make those opportunities happen. It felt like it was similar with Johanna with the Condemn, just not as powerful. Yeah, definitely. I'm kind of liking the draft for Soul Torturers right now. The Uther, Abathur, Illidan, really reminiscent of E-Star's draft. Like, when they have these three heroes, they yeah. start 3v5-ing. Um, it's really a scary sight. I wonder if Soul Torturers can execute to that degree. I, I also wonder if Red Cannons has two potential tank players. Um, I was going to say, if the variant ban would be a good ban to have if you're going to be running the Silidan app with their style, but of course the Arthas and the Varian very similar. Yeah, exactly. I don't mind the Arthas ban at all, but still, as we said, Varian might be an option for them. They definitely need something to lock that Illidan down. It's going to be the focus point of the Soul Torturers. What do you think we're going to see when it comes to the backline, though, for the additional damage? Oftentimes, when you see an Illidan composition, one of the core ideas is that Illidan is going to create space for the backline to do a lot of damage. What do you think would be the best option for him here? Well, they're only going to get one backline pick if uh, you're talking about so tortures because they need the tank. So mm -hmm. ideally, I would say something that works well with Abathur, maybe a Tychus, uh, maybe a, a mage. Even a false stat is not the worst, but I, I don't think they'll be going that route. Bala? Bala is good, but Abathur is different in that Abathur doesn't really protect you as a Vala. Mm. Um, you know, with the Tassadar, Tassadar enables Vala. But when you have an Abathur, he adds more damage rather than more protection. So you want something that's naturally tanky or hard to kill, such as, you know, your Tychus's, your Li Ming's. Well, so far, Red Cannon's is building a very stable, traditional roster here, considering the tournament. 
Yeah, the tried and true duo. It's been around for months now. The gray main and Tyrael being in the mix here. You get the Malfurion for that back line. Make it a little bit easier here for the uh, Malfurion to be safe. And of course, just use Twilight Dream if Illidan goes in for the aggressive play. And yeah, so now we're waiting on what Fan was pointing out earlier, the aggressive engage that could occur. You need a little bit of wave clear here from Soul Torturers as well. Well, granted, you have out there, it should be okay. But what tank in particular do you think jumps out at you? I have to imagine Muradin at this point. The Terial might have been a better choice than that. I actually was going to say Red Cannons took the Terial, which I don't think is quite as good as the Varian if you're going to go into this double tank style against an Illidan. But in my opinion, it's actually better for this draft because if Soul Torturers gets Terial, if they get that double invulnerability yeah. composition with the Illidan Apathur, that's actually terrifying. So the deny pick there is actually pretty good for them. And there's the Muradin for the tank. And the Lunara. Lunara is actually pretty good with the Apathur as well. Deadly composition. Uh, I remember seeing Eastar run this in particular in the Eastern Clash. We've seen it come up a few times here and there. Mm -hmm. Illidan just buys so much space for Lenar to just put out the poison and eventually break down your opponent. Now, Fury will be able to handle it slightly, but there is a breaking point that does connect throughout an objective phase, especially here on Towers of Doom, where that can be really effective. The next thing you know, you get a kill, and Illidan just starts snowballing the fight. Mm. One thing I'm worried about is right now, Red Cannons, once again, has no magic damage. They need something that hits hard and hits hard magically because you have two tanks in the Grey Main right now, and those things don't actually do anything to an Illidan with Evasion. Um, the Twilight Dream is a big one, but... Ooh, I don't like that pick at all. I think that's too much physical damage against someone that can evade all mm. physical damage, but we'll have to see. Especially since... this is I think this is the second time we've had... Illidan with Uther this tournament. Yeah. And it, as you were mentioning, with the D Shield, it can be. I mean, he's already got Abatha as well to have that sustain coming out. Never mind the D Shield that's very, very powerful. I'm very much afraid for the Red Cannons now. I was impressed in the first game yeah, yeah. by how well they played their composition, especially since I heavily favored the Soul Torturers going into the game on Cursed Hollow. Right now, that Illidan concerns me quite a bit because I believe in the power of Zola and if he's supported yes. by not only <laughs> the Uther and the Divine Shield but also an Abathur on top of that, 13, so much transference, it's just, it's gonna be rough. Yeah, the longer this game goes, the more I get more worried for the Red Cannons and it's looking like this isn't gonna be something they can really pull off that well. Uh, gosh, I know you're not asking for predictions already, but we're kind of like laying it out for you. It's looking really good for Soul Torture as they have a much better draft already in that fifth pick. The same reaction as Fan had. Okay, that's a Vala. Illidan gets on that and drops Evasion and brings out a couple of auto attacks. That Vala's down to half health. I like both of the teams. I would love this to be a 1 1, but I still have to say I believe that the Illidan is going to be just strong. I go with the Soul Torturers again. Yeah, for me, it's got to be the Illidan show. This is the kind of draft where you see both sides and you, you're like, okay, put me in, coach. Like, GG. Like, Illidan <laughs> just going to crush everything. Soul Torturers. Fan is just sitting there the entire time and he's just asking, like, I, I like the, the gig with the talking, but can I just jump on the keyboard? Yeah, just, just one game, you know? <laughs> just a little bit. Walks over, just, like, tags out. I'm enjoying how I hosted that last two minutes without saying a single word. You killed it. You're I so kind of good. Just, like, looked at you. You knew what was going on. You kept going. <laughs> <laughs> My job is done. You trained as well. Apparently. <laughs> well done, guys. Well done. All right. Time to get like into game puppy. number two here <laughs> as we continue down the way. Let's head over to the commentary team for another game. Well, Dreadnought, we've got another all-in composition here from Soul Torturers. I imagine with this composition, we might see a little bit more aggression, but we're headed into game number two. Soul Torturers versus Red Cannons. I am ready for it. Soul Torturers here already got the first victory. Can they get the second? Hikari is going to be on the Uther. Zola playing the Abathur. Lolly on Illidan. God Dog playing Lunara. And Scroll once again on Muradin. And on the right side in red, fittingly, is the Red Cannons. Hamtaro will be on Anubarak. Jay Shrite on Greymane. Typhex on Tyrael. Viera will be on Malfurion. And Letho 
on Vala and Dread. I want to talk about this right away because we talked about Illidan diving that backline on Vala. Vala's like, wait a minute, those auto attacks probably aren't going to do as much. So transfer into Q build. It allows you to be more successful in 1v1 skirmishes, especially post 13. Uh, why 13? Mainly because it allows you to the damage done onto your Q can translate over to your HP. You reset to get a secondary and suddenly a 1v1 versus Illidan still sucks, by the way. <laughs> Flat still sucks, but at least it's tolerable for a longer period of time. And if you can buy time against the Illidan, you're making it through evasion. That'll be really interesting to see that approach. I do like the fact that it's not just auto attack Vala, which is the standard build, but a little bit of uh, ingenuity here. I think working on the side of red cannons is uh, they get this uh, strong three-man push here on the bottom lane. Yeah, everything else looks to be what we would expect. A small change at level one out of a new Barak, though, going into the regen master. I'm not going to say we haven't seen this talent before, but it is not the norm, you know, not right out the gates. I, and that, that's the other thing. I mean, there's there's a couple of different choices I think that we'll take a look at as time goes on. You can see the damage being put out here by both teams. I think we're going to have a little bit of a stalemate here early as, as we wait for the first phase. But Typhex finding Muradin waiting in his bush. Yeah, and it's going to be really crucial here for right cannons. I guess not so much crucial, but I'd like to see them try and find a way to apply. I take it back. It's going to be crucial. They need to find a way to apply pressure to the early game, mainly because, again, into an Abathur composition, your opponent doesn't have necessarily the greatest defense to your siege. You should find a way to get an advantage here into the laning phase because stalling out into an Abathur comp is terrible. It, it's just not a good idea. Stalling out against an Abathur Illidan composition is essentially game suicide. <laughs> oh, we will see here soon. 20 seconds away from our first altar phase. Again, I, yeah, it's, it, it's just, it's possible, but I, I mean, it, you're you're waiting for a miracle, really. Cocoon Sinks have to be absolutely flawless to recover. It, it is definitely going to be something we'll keep an eye on as it goes on. Level four, close here for both teams. A few seconds away from the first altar phase. I wonder if we'll see Soul Torchers be a little bit more passive, try and just grab one and concede the other two. But it looks like we might have a contest here on the bottom. Yeah, the Abathur getting the free pickup there is something that you typically don't want to give over. But Red Cannons didn't send a secondary member to get the interrupt. Was not even honestly looked at here. So Red Cannons, now let's see what they can make happen on bottom. They've already got the Illidan through Soul Torchers through mid and a new Brack soaking top, trying not to fall behind in experience. So this is a big advantage for Soul Torchers. A scroll going in, interrupting one more time. And when we're done with this, we'll take a look at that middle lane because on the mini map, we see Illidan there. So we'll see the results of what he managed to do. Ate quite a bit of that ammo middle lane, trying to get some control. So Soul Torchers, despite giving up the extra altar, got a little bit perhaps long-term for them. Yeah, that was exactly what Soul Torchers wanted to do. Uh, we talk about the early game, and it, it's just the Abathur typically does struggle. So they were like, we don't want to risk a full five on five on that bottom altar. Granted, I, I, I think they went for a greedy play, but Red Cannons gave it to him purely off of that rotation. Abathur should not get a full free channel on his altar by himself. Oh, but the catch out here on the Viera. Oh, Viera in a bad spot. That's going to be our first blood of the game. Soul Torchers doesn't have to be aggressive if you just kind of walk out to where they don't have to do much. Yeah, it's a good point you bring up there. Just a little bit too far. Caught off sides and now sappers are going to be picked up for red cannons. Any kind of pressure they can get outward on to the map is going to be beneficial. But unlike we've seen with some of these aggressive compositions at other parts throughout today, it's not all in on team fighting. There is solid wave clear for both departments. Typex, though, sniffing this out. Lolly on this camp, he does have the extra attack speed from Abathur, but oh. instantly diving over onto Jay Shrite. Greymane's going to go down. The return damage onto Scroll. But Viera comes in with the clutch heals. The rotation there is enough for them at least to go blow for blow. And Loon's Grace Root should be available in the next couple seconds. But Viera and friends do not want to get any more aggressive. I'm going to be honest here. <laughs> that was an Illidan with only a hat. Clearing out a sapper for free versus three people. I would have liked to see Red Cannons try and zone off of there. You know, it's just, again, it's kind of nitpicky, but it's, it's small things add up here at the top level. Oh. And Lethos. Oh my. The shields? Is it the enough? Heel. The <laughs> they did it. They kept them alive at least. So, an argument, you know, he would have died if they didn't make that rotation. So, I was wrong. <laughs> But would it have been there if they hadn't have made the rotation? Who knows? <laughs> Hikari starts the channel Viera with the interrupt, but it causes him to get stunned out. Yeah, Viera being dove upon again. This is very reminiscent of last game, but a nice cocktail hits there, forcing a couple members back. Lolly starting to walk away as the Eldruins going down. 
Fiera starting a channel. Can Scroll get the interrupt? It's going to start the channel. Nobody get the interrupt yet. In last second, they get it off. But Scroll cost him a lot of his HP, looking to be able to get that passive. Malfurion, once again, they find Fiera <laughs> up into the front line. Nobody having the peels, even with a double warrior. Somehow, Soul Torchers can win these early fights, five versus five. It's amazing that with Atira, and all of a sudden, the Nubarak taking a lot of damage. The poison, the shields are not enough as they hop right on and get another kill. Soul Torchers tread a full level up yeah. all of a sudden. I mean, it's looking like they're about to turn this game on its head. <laughs> it's just with this big of a lead, with a hyper carry composition, and with an Abathur, the only thing that Red Cannons can really say is beneficial to them in this game is that they are on Towers of Doom, and Soul Torturers cannot right-click their core. I, it, otherwise, this game could have been over on any other <laughs> map. It would be a couple of minutes before I'd be like, I think Red Cannons will lose this. So that is a huge, I don't know if huge is the proper term, but it is a victory <laughs> for Red Cannons here. All right, we are going to see Metamorphosis and a Leaping Strike, which says that Lunar with Leaping Strike, so long as you have two charges, you can also now dive in and dive out a little bit more. So it, with Splintered Spear and this, the amount of pressure that's going to be put on, uh, you know, Skullcracker Muradin, Illidan on that back line, I am worried for Red Cannons. We do have Sanctification. <sighs> Man, this is going to get real testy, I think, the minute both these teams hit 10. And one thing I do want to note when looking at kind of an, a step back at overarching changes of metas and trends, but wait a minute, Stormbolt not landing for scroll. Uh, it's just the Lunara, as you were talking on, the Leaping Strikes, but the Splinter Spear at 7. So originally when Lunara was a thing, before she kind of has made a second rise, it, you had to go into the Thornwood Vine, you were looking to spread out the damage, your idea was to slow them down for that Illidan to be able to get all that DPS outward. But as Splinter Spear has only increased in the number of targets to hit, you can have the mobility and burst of the Leaping Strike and still have the AoE slow of the Splinter Spear. It's just the slow buffs of this hero over time has suddenly made her <laughs> that much better with the Illidan. So I love to see, you know, that come to life finally here in this game. All right, they're diving onto Scroll. He's getting stunned, he's getting rooted, but he's gonna dwarf toss away and be just fine. And all of a sudden we have the return pressure. Zola and Lolly going in on the double Illidan, but we do have the Cocoon the, out on the other side. The Cocoon peel is there, the Leaping Strike and the Sanctification is gonna drop. Twilight Dream is followed up. Will the Illidan go down? The dash, the Divine Shield gets him as he's so very low, but I don't know if he can make it out, Jayhaw. They are. It putting pressure on the Typex, who is going to be the first to fall. We are going to see if the explosion, it does confirm the kill on the Uther, but we have three members down already. God Dog putting the pressure on, and that is a five-man team wipe. Look at the death bars on the side of Soul Torture's <laughs> Uther is the only man dead, and that is the last target you want to see dead on the side of Soul Torture's the minute. That Illidan was falling so low multiple times into the fight, but Uther with his passive, he's just throwing up the heels. Illidan kept himself alive, scraping by more shots. A, a bell tower is at least set and prepped to be converted whenever desired. Soul Torturers are keeping up the pressure as well as they can on a map like Towers. Again, you know, it forces a pause button. They do not open lethal nearly as easy as you can on some of the other maps, but it's still looking very dour if you're a Red Cannons fan. I bet if you're a Red Cannons, you wish there was a pause button right now so you could regroup and try <laughs> and figure out what to do because at 13, this team only gets scarier on the side of Soul Torchers. We talked about it before. The heal from the Abathur Symbiote, yeah. the healing static from Murden himself, they will be on you, they will be in your face the minute you group up. That only complements the dive of Soul Torchers. It does. Every time that we see the hat going onto the Illidan, if he hits a W onto multiple targets, that leads to a free, uh, essentially it's a half of an Uther hero, roughly, at this point in the game. And that is something that is really going to make Red Cannons need to be that much more precise and accurate and just almost efficient here with their decision making and more importantly, their cooldowns, if they're gonna get rid of this Illy. Scroll with the nice Storm Bolt to stop the heavy rotation. The roots landed, but no follow up as they were thwarted. Two level lead here for Soul Torchers. The good news, Red Cannons should be 13 soon. By the time this altar comes up, we'll have another chance, but the camp's being picked up by Soul Torchers at the top and on the bottom left. Gonna put some map pressure as well with an Abathur top as well. You see Tyfax, he knew that the camp was taken and the rest of Canids did know as well. They were just trying to find a way, what was the proper timing group 
reveal each other only at once and then be, you know, hasteful with their initiation. But it was scattered out once again by Scroll. Effective there onto the Murden. One of the biggest traits of Murden. You know, he's one of the best at moving, overextending, but being safe in the time. You know, he can be up in the front line more than every other hero. But this is our altar. This is the altar phase. The Burrow in is going to land onto a couple members. Typhex going in as well. But now you can see Lolly with that Abathur hat is wreaking <laughs> havoc. Metamorphosis is out. However, Sanctification, well timed. That's a big Sanctification. The Twilight Dream was a solid follow up. But here, Lolly, he got the D Shield. He's got the hat and one member down. What happens here? It's a four versus four. It is a four versus four. And Lolly continue to put the pressure on Shrite, just trying to walk away. But he is under so much pressure. And Lolly just diving in as, as Uther coming in with the stun. Shrite able to vault away, but not before several members of Red Cannons. And by several, I mean four and they're lucky again that it wasn't five. Yeah, and if anybody is wondering, you know, they experienced the hell that was a meta long, long ago where Illidan <laughs> reigned supreme. And now they see, you know, Genji coming in with his flashy plays and such. We want every time a five versus five happens, it's close. It's close until a kill opens. happens. <laughs> exactly <laughs> like you see with those Genjis. This is the chase. The minute that one pick happened, Lolly's like, I get a four versus four. <laughs> because he doesn't deal well with the full pressure of an entire composition against him. But the minute it becomes only enough to do minor damage to his HP, nothing beyond that 50% threshold, it is legitimately a dream to be an Illidan in those circumstances. Trite. You know, I'm just going to say this. I'm super disappointed super disappointed that we did not have the camera on when you did your dance <laughs> when you were describing that because that would have been something that i think would be loved i you know i think <laughs> a lot of people at home fail to realize how extremely animated i am uh, but i that's probably for the better i it's uh, a lot of mistakes have been made but 16 now 17 three level lead boss is going to be started onto the soul torturers there's no contesting this Typex without the Holy Ground is just unreasonable. Yeah, the Roots are going to try and peel just a little bit, but Hamtaro finding himself in a tough position. They just need to walk away from this. And they're down 32 to 10. It's going to be a tough comeback, but it is Towers of Doom where crazy things do happen. But they have a tall task ahead of them. They very much do. The one thing I would say on the side of Red Cannons, don't lose hope. You've seen way, way crazier comebacks against much more established names in teams like, I don't know, L5. So <laughs> before you let it up and give it away here, hold the composure, sit back. You've got the 16 talents here. This is where we can see Let Am fight back. Well, they're going to have to do it, and they're going to have to do it right now, Dread. If two altars are channeled in their current state by Soul Tortures, they have enough shots to secure this game. And if a bell tower is converted back to the red cannons, all three will be necessary if they are going to end the game here. But the sappers have been cleared. No bell tower is going to be converted. So two altars is the win condition for soul torturers. Do, do, do we get a D shield cap on one side and something else somewhere? I mean, S Uther's already capping one. And if you can begin the channel and then D shield, but somebody else has to do it. Oh, that splintered spear is doing work. Typex is in deep. He's going to El Druins out. The Holy Ground is going to lock them out, at least for the moment. But the poison damage is doing so much sanctification already used. But so is D-Shield onto Illidan. They've got the cocoon and the isolation here. But a man down on the side of Soul Torturers. The Twilight Dream ends up getting dropped. But look at Lolly. He's just got so many heals. The back of the ice block, red cannons. Everybody's health bars are falling so very low. They're trying to turn it. Hikari will fall. But again, that is Uther. And look for Illidan to try and stay on top of this. Shrite and team are falling back, but they cannot give up the altar. And we see Scroll already working his way over. They have to go down. Dread. He starts. They, they don't see it. He starts to channel Hamtaro. He panics. Can he get it? The burrow. He can't. No, no, he does not. He doesn't get it. Soul Torturers, they win Towers of Doom. <laughs> Just beat your, beat your teammate with your penguin plushie. Dread, can somebody get me a plushie up here? I'm just gonna start beating Dread with it here in a second. Zola there showing <laughs> a, you know, relief, signs of relief here for Soul Torturers. And this, man, these results of this series opens a window. <laughs> it doesn't lock anything in, but it does lead for a very awkward bottom section of this almost possible 
tiebreakers coming in play. I, 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 I love the result. I don't love the result at the same time because red cannons, man, you could see the fight in those guys. You, I just, you can feel it. It, it. It's tough. I mean, at this late in the game, the, the funny thing is they're actually not even done yet for tonight. But uh, it is a tough loss there. But you can see Soul Torchers, they know what they want. They play it well. This is the old team that we saw last year. They played these types of compositions. They put the pressure on their opponents, whether it was Zeratul last year, ETC, things that they did. They find some way to put the pressure on. But I think we're going to hear from our council parliament concave Joy hosted by Calaris. We're going to see what they have to say. Uh, we're actually the congregation now, but thank you. As we do continue things on, it's 2 0. What? This is impressive what you pull out, man. I have a lot of words. Uh, it's 2 0. <laughs> the best words at least. Are yeah. The best words. You got them constantly. Yep. The very best words. We've got all the best words. Yes. Everybody says so. Everybody says so. Yeah, 100% <laughs> the best words. We won by a landslide. You can um, ask anybody. Yeah, you can ask everybody. Anyway, 2-0. Two, two soul torturers there as the penguin was used as a physical weapon uh, against one of his uh, members as well. Uh, he deserved victory there, though. They looked very good on Towers of Doom. Yeah, Soul Torture's delivering there, uh, doing as we expected. I feel like Red Cannons did better than I thought they would, but eventually did fall victim to uh, the reasons that we pulled out um, during the analyst sec segment. But... Red Cannons has to just take this loss and keep going forward. They have two matches today. Yes, they do. Uh, and uh, the next one is going to be a tough one here. Red Cannons, obviously, there There were some moments where they were almost able to kill the Illidan, but he just kept coming back lowly, lowly, lowly all over. It's, it's always the same against Illidan. It's close until yeah. it isn't anymore. So all of a sudden, the first target dies, and that's when you build up the momentum and you go in. But it's all about Dillard, and, and in this particular draft, Soldiers were just too strong. I mean, many times even uh, he was Twilight Dreamed quite significantly, but then D Shield comes in, yeah. saves him for the time that he needs it, then he gets right back in there, fam. Yeah, that's pretty much the story of this game. I mean, the way the heroics worked out, if the Illidan plays right, if the t his team plays right, you actually just don't have quite enough heroics to <laughs> right. deal with the D Shield. So, Illidan show. Well, let's take a look at the replay that you do have selected for us. Sure thing. Let's jump right into here then. So this was actually very well done by both teams. You see cannons, they're engaging right away and Illidan's in there. You see a five-man meta here or a four-man meta if we could pause right here. So the course of events that happened there was the Illidan gets a three or four-man meta. Very good play on his part, followed immediately by a sanctification by the cannons. So the sanctification kind of cancels out any momentum that meta provided. You also see Viera on the mouth. He's right in the middle of the enemy team here. He's going to land a very big Twilight Dream, but the critical target he needed to hit was Hikari because Hikari has the D shield for the Illidan yep. and he didn't quite manage to hit him. So if we could play on here, we see the Twilight Dream. It hits three people, but not Hikari. Hikari D shields the Illidan and Illidan starts going back in here and everyone on the other team goes back in. You see a very nice play by Jishrite, but not quite enough. And if we could pause right here one more time. So this is the requirements of the Illidan show. If you can look up here, cannons, you have no ultimates anymore. If you have no ultimates, there are two outcomes. Either the Illidan is dead or the rest of his team is. And if neither of those are true, then mm -hmm. Illidan kills you all. So play on and, you know, here comes the Illidan show. No ulties, no way to stop him. Just full retreat, but Illidan is not a hero you want to be on full retreat against. All right, and that does that. Very impressive stuff here as Zola continues to kill everything in this final moments of this replay. In fact, we are joined by Zola and his penguin and our lovely translator. And so congratulations on the 2-0 moving forwards. Uh, what did you expect going up uh, against Red Canids? They've improved from day to day to day, uh, but you were victorious. 大家其實對於我之前你是怎麼感覺還有什麼你所目標的嗎因為他們就每一天都有進步嘛 I think I was pretty anxious facing against Red Candids, uh, Candids because I think they're playing pretty well as well. Mm -hmm. And we thought that we would just want to secure 2 0 against Red Candids for a chance to qualify. But before I played this match and I saw that Temple Storm had already uh, had one point mm -hmm. 
uh, before. So it kind of makes our chances of qualifying now even slimmer because I thought we would play a tiebreaker. So. Right, okay. Fan? Close. Yeah, so just asking about the group. So he thinks his chances of... So you think your chances of qualifying are a bit slimmer now, but Tempo Storm did take one game off of Dignitas. Um, what do you think about your chances in the rest of the group there? Uh I think going into tomorrow's match against E Star, we feel like E Star's draft and playstyle is very unpredictable. And we're not really confident going up against them, but we would still try our best. Okay. Uh, very important strategy question. Um, he hit his teammate with his penguin at the very end. Is there a particular reason why? Gadolan I hit him because when he was playing Lunara and he died first, so he respawned and he could actually go grab the last tower and we would win. But I was playing Avatar, I had no time to look at it. And then so I asked him why why didn't you just go grab it? You know, you were being stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect stuff. Well thank you very much, Zola, for that two zero. Good job. As we check in with the groups now and see what has gone on so 